Hello ladies and gents and welcome back to Galactic Civilizations 4 Supernova. And today, continuing on our journey up to the hardest difficulty, we're going to be starting a brand new game. Ah yes, the first harmonizers. We're not doing any of that today. Today we're going to be doing a random civilization. And uh, bump the difficulty, we're up to incredible now after a very easy diplomatic win on Genius. But incredible it is, game pacing will be normal, research is normal, minor races... I'll leave that as occasional. I don't even know what these are. Let's bump that up to common. Common minor races. Hostile entities, occasional, and uh, not too close civ proximity. As for our galaxy size, I think we're going to go up in galaxy size. And we might even go up in sectors. Star frequency, frequency is occasional. Habitable planets and extreme. Everything else will be occasional. Advanced settings, we will disable tech brokering. Leave these two on. Uh, surrender colonies. We'll leave that off. We'll leave that on. We'll leave that off. We'll leave that on. We'll leave that on, I guess. And uh, that's going to be it. Unclear what sort of victory we're going to be going for as we are a random sieve. We'll see what we get next. Uh, how many do we have here? 12 of 19 players. Let's stack a couple more in there. One more for good measure. Ah, uh, screw it. Let's just get everybody in here. <laughs> Let's see how this shakes out. Alrighty, we are the Drath Freehold. Enigmatic and manipulative, the Drath are marked by their unique and mysterious hatred for the Altarians. The Drath claim to have originated on and be the true owners of the planet Altar, though few have who have heard the claim can see how that's possible. What is known is that they are clever and manipulative, not aggressive by nature, and possessing a naturally slow growth rate. The Drath are not prone to wide expansion. They make up for this with exceedingly, even suspiciously high, diplomatic and economic skills. The Drath have bonuses to diplomatic and economic skills, but are hampered with a slow natural birth rate. Okie dokies. Well, this kind of leads into our last playthrough where we did see how good diplomacy can be. And I think for this game, with this particular Civ, we will be looking to do some diplomacy, but not win an alliance victory. No. We're going to want to make some strong alliances early on and see how far down the tech tree we can get I still have not built a tarot star, so I think that's something we're going to be trying to do. And maybe go for a galactic victory? Uh, domination, maybe? Maybe alliance after we do some dominating. We'll see how this plays out. But okay, welcome to turn one. Now, we have this planet right here on an exceedingly close second planet with two minerals some research some wealth and some food so that's a good one that's a dead planet any other planets here there is one other planet it's going to be this research planet somewhere let's see if we can find this guy let's send our probe out see where that planet is she's right there so immediately turn one it's going to be draft colonists yes i don't even want to know let's go ahead and get this guy down there's our first colony done Here's our flagship. There's some space junk right here. You can go ahead and sort that out. There's our second colony ship. Let's go ahead and just ram you into that planet. And okay, already we're starting to look pretty good. Ha, huh, that's a lot bigger than we're used to. And we're kind of in the middle. Kind of in the middle. Let's explore this way and see if we can maybe grab up a couple more planets before much else happens. All right, we're going to go for colonial policies right off the bat. I do like having asteroid mining here, though. No guarantee that that's going to turn up later on. That's okay. Colonial policies, it is. As for our probe, let's just send him backwards in this direction. I think we are going to open up with a second probe and maybe even a third probe. Oh, maybe second probe into colony ship. I think that's how we're going to play it. And that's it for turn one. Let's see how this goes. Boom. There's our bubble. We've got planetary generators unlocked, giving us some extra manufacturing if we need it. Uh, and the max enacted policies is going to be great. And the policy assignments, good stuff. Research districts. I do think we're going to want 
a hefty amount of research for this playthrough because we're going to need to keep pace with the AI and the AI gets ridiculous. So did not have asteroid mining, which does sort of suck, but we could go for a Xeno industrialization, giving us access to that supply depot to get some early manufacturing going. We have two policy slots right off the bat. Could get some very fast influence growth. That is a lot. 100 influence growth? Ooh, okay. Yes, well, I, I do believe we're going for that heritage protection for 100 influence growth to our homeworld and Heart of the Empire for an extra 10% influence growth and income. Speaking of income, we're going to go ahead and drop this down to normal for that 69 approval. We're going to need to get that up ASAP. That's pretty low. And our income is going to be really bad for a bit. That's okay. For our leaders, uh, we don't seem to be extremely intelligent. I hate to break it to you, boys. You're not the brightest lot. But, all right, let's think about our ministers. And we're going to want basically all of these things. Okay, so, Minister of Exploration. we got an exploratory dude here, but he's actually our best science. You'll be Minister of Growth. Let's go ahead and... Oh, colonization. So there's an extra 11 approval. Now that helps. I guess you're our best option for science for now. So let's go ahead and plop you in there. And the last one isn't that important. We'll probably get this guy. We'll take this gentleman of all of the others because he's got all right diligence, but he does have better social. So we might use him as a diplomat later down the road when Minister of Exploration isn't quite as critical but however that plus one move and the extra ship range is going to help us get through a little bit of the early game all right we have access to managing our planet and what what do we have on this planet let's see we have got some science some housing we got a little bit of everything this planet's all over the shop penumbral beacon upgrade this artifact to unlock charges that will summon a creature from space we can be annoying i probably end up destroying that this gives us research all right so there's there's a lot that we could do with this planet this is good if we put our capital here we'll have plus three which is very nice the adjacency won't be so bad but we do hit some science and we can sort of build out in these directions Take a look at our home world. It mostly does science. It does it does everything kind of good. It does everything kind of good. So much influence though. Whew. That's a lot of influence early on. All right, so capital city's going down here. I think that is best. We will never get to this pop cap. And first, I think we're going to build maybe the industrial center or planetary generator. Don't love that pollution, but we do have lots of food to go around. We can get this out a little bit quicker. I think we want to do sciencey stuff up here. Not a lot of great manufacturing spots. Get research adjacency over this way. Maybe we just do a small manufacturing hub over here. We'll plop something like that down and then we'll get the planetary generator. That's a plus four. It's not the best spot, is it? I think here is probably better. And then we get manufacturing plants down around it. Probably there's okay. Yeah. We'll we'll dedicate down here to research and maybe a bit up here. And we can manufacture all of this stuff, I guess. And building off of that, probably research here would be okay. Either one would be fine. Let's start there. Something like this for now will be our early game. All right, what else have we got going on here? We have a little bit of crime. What's making our citizens unhappy? We drafted colonists. Yeah, we did. High expectations. Not much we can do against that. Unprotected, we hate our culture. Why do you hate our culture? Our culture is great. Okay. Our culture is amazing. We will go ahead and probably do a telescope takeover as well. Just so we can learn what's out over this way. Not a lot. There's a couple class 1 poor worlds. Not particularly high value. But if we can get our hands on it, that would be good. Would be good. What do we got over here? Class 1 poor. We should probably just do a quick scout down this way, perhaps. If we can get eyeballs on this star, it'll let us know if there's any planets there. So our first anomaly. Let's see what we get. When did they add voiceovers? 
I that's that's new. Awesome. This game has actually hit uh its 1.0 actual release already. And we'll talk a little bit about that because last time I played there were a lot of changes that I would recommend that they have made or, or that they make. And maybe those some of those have been implemented, but we, we will address that when it comes up. But for the moment, we can activate the relic. We'll get 30 research and some progressivism. I like that 30 research. We could sell it for money. I think we'll take the research. Free research is good. It'll smash out Xeno industrialization and we get to choose a new tech. I don't think we want to go military just yet because we are going to try to be friends with anybody in our immediate vicinity. We can make that happen. And to that end, we'll probably want Universal Translator sooner rather than later. We're not in a rush to get these things just yet. Let's go ahead and get that out because we are expecting there to be a lot of civs and somebody nearby. Probably second probe has come out. Let's go ahead and send him this direction. There's a star pretty close by. Oh, you're a flagship. Okay, well, we'll just ask you to survey. Thought that was our probe finished. There's another planet. Class 21, amazing. I mean, it's okay. It's a planet that we can use. We'll probably look to colonize that next. It's quite a journey for this probe. We will send him down this way. All right, so quite a lot of stuff that we want here. Speak openly, alien, so we might know you friend or foe. Friend, sir. Friend. Okay. Just in time, as we get Universal Translator giving us access to quite a few things, including open borders, exploration treaties, we can trade with people, the Heritage Center for that tourism and a cultural district, and opening the way to Hyperwave Radio, the Beacon of Babylon, if you're going for any kind of influence win is a must. I don't even know how you win without that thing. So we might look to build that early just so that nobody else does. We're going to choose a new tech here and it's probably going to be artificial gravity at this point. Hyperwave radio is another high priority, but we would like ship movement plus one. Although the faster we can get to diplomacy, the better for us. Let's go ahead and do that next. It is going to be colony ship time. We have another probe. This probe we're going to send sort of in this direction. I don't want to auto explore because what I've found happens when you auto explore, maybe they've changed it, is that your probe or whatever is going to make a beeline for the border and do a circuit. Not exactly what we want. They're over in this direction. Let's have a look back on our capital to make sure that there's nothing else that we would rather build. We do have access to the supply depot, which gives us a little bit of an approval bump. People starting to be happy. They still hate our culture. I don't know why you hate our culture, man. Culture is amazing. You don't hate our culture. Well, yes, you are going to be heading off into space, sir. Don't like our culture? Go to space. No, I think everything's still looking fine here. We'll probably get this supply depot. It's not a bad spot. That is also not a bad spot. Yeah, something like that. That'll do. Okay. Mr. Probe. Didn't really find anything here. Flagship finds the remains of a long-lost exposed vessel along with detailed logs. Use the logs to chart new paths. Not clear what that does for us. Don't think it's revealed anything on the map. Alien, know this. We were ancient when the universe was new, but we are now only a dim shadow of what we were once were. That's a shame. We hope to build a better future with you. Greetings and welcome. The Altarian. Aren't these the people we hate? Our civilization has flourished for thousands of years. We know of powers that you cannot even imagine. Okie dokies. We're meeting a lot of people. There's hyperwave radio. Uh, we can enact another policy, which is great. Possibly we would like to get trade networks. But I think we should probably get a little bit of this subspace scanning. We don't need to rush this right now. Leadership recruiting is also very strong. Our research kind of sucks for the moment. Kind of sucks. Diplomacy would be great. Plus one diplomacy bonus would always be good. We, we, we need to avoid a war at all cost early game. Let's pick up space elevators. Get a little bit of production. Okay, we can get our first cultural progression, which is independence. Now, this will give us um, minus 15 decay from, colony sh from colonies. So the further away your colonies are, the more decay they have, the less yields they send back to the home planet. And we get a ship. So this increases our yields by a little bit. And we get another ship. Now that is okay. 
But we're going to save because I really think early on, three free colony ships is just huge. 10% approval boost on all worlds is also huge. So we're going to hold off and wait for two more culture points and then grab that one up. We're waiting for our colony. Our draft colonies is up. We can actually pick that now and grab up some more worlds for our empire. And I think that's probably best. Let's go ahead and do that. Draft some more colonists. Yes, we don't want to go too crazy on this, especially if we are going for eg egalitarianism. Let's grab this class 21 world over here. Another policy to plug in. Pros income plus five. That's a lot, but it's also a lot of pollution. Pollution hurts our growth, which is already pretty terrible. But we don't need this forever, right? We can just plug this in for a little bit. Yes, so pollution, pretty high. 50% rough. But we are making eight gold per turn. That is good early on in the game. And as long as people don't get upset because their planet's a shithole, it's okay. It's a nice planet. People are happy. Don't need this coordination beacon. We'll have our capital mainframe up pretty soon. Research definitely needs to be a little bit higher up there. Any good resources that we can grab? I'm not seeing any immediately. That's a bit unfortunate. We have another explorer that is able to survey, so we will do that. We'll just put you to auto-survey. It's a class 22 world down here that's also within reach. Continue to scout these stars. Not bad. Class... Class 2 and a class 2 over this way. So there's a lot of planets that we can grab up. Nothing too high priority, but it's okay. All What matters? Oh, they have actually settled here. Okay. Let's have a look at the diplomacy. Everybody's kind of okay with us at the moment. This is what we would like. We may want a diplomat here, as these guys seem like they are not best pleased with us. But... Uh, I, I guess we can do that earlier rather than later. Will be quite the expense, though. But maybe we can just go for a treaty, something like open borders. This works. Accept. We should have probably asked for some cash. In fact, let's go ahead and ask for open borders with everybody. Okay, we need to know these guys a little bit longer. How about you guys? You would like open borders? You're okay with it. Give me some credits. They will be okay with this. And we get 50 credits. What about credits per month? Uh, get Go away. Go away. Get rid of that. Give me credits per month. They will agree to one credit per month. Helios or could be useful. They would don't like that offer. Okay, you know what? Just give me, give me the cash. I'm fine with 50. You can even get 60. Let's get 60. 60 is fine. Accepted. And we'll come back to you in just a second. Okie dokies. Only ship is on the way. Now, if we could get eyeballs on an enemy ship, I would love to know what their uh, movement speed is. Let's go ahead and send you up this way. All right, we've got a probe overhead. 10 movement speed compared to our something. We are not doing the most research, not even close. Okay, Mr. Unhappy Citizen, you go off into space. I mean, this guy hates our culture, but he's a worker. All right, bye-bye, worker. So that's another colony ship. Let's go ahead and it grabbed up this 21 world. I don't like it. Uh, let's get let's get this. Try to get this anyway. Do we need another colony ship? It's probably a good idea. A constructor might not be too bad either, but we want to get trading. So let's build a trade ship. We would like to be friends with everybody in our immediate vicinity and maybe make war with other people. Perhaps the Altarians have to die. Perhaps. Perhaps. Okay, our, our flagship here has a level up. We're going to go with plus one move so they can get around and find us more things. An intriguing discovery has been made. A device from a long gone Arnor civilization. Its structure suggests it might be used to enhance the structural integrity of our fleet. Alternatively, its exotic material could fetch a good price. So... I'm guessing this is going to add HP max to one of our ships, or we could just get 100. Now, 100 isn't that good, but I feel like it might be kind of good. 
Let's dismantle it and trade it. Give me the cash. We are now able to actually pick up uh, egalitarianism for fairness and the wonderful bonuses it gives us. 10% approval boost on all of our worlds, plus three free colony ships. Um, let's go ahead and grab that. I don't know how far down this tree we're going. Honestly, we probably want to get some progressivism in there. Individualism leads on to lots of leaders, lots of bonuses, more loyalty and a policy slot, more attributes for our citizens. This might not be terrible as our citizens. I mean, we don't grow very quickly, so making the people that we do have good is probably a, a thing we want to do. Approval bonus, approval, so much approval. Raw wealth for each citizen. Individual divinity technology. All right. Why is our star green? I think stars can be green. I think. Could be wrong. All right. So as for our colony ships, we are settling this planet. We have a couple here that we can grab. We've got a ship going down this way. We would like to give it some extra resources as well to help it develop. Assuming we decide to go governor, we still haven't checked out this star, which is unforgivable. Unforgivable. I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to send a one colony ship out over this way. I will send a colony ship for this. This is actually quite a good planet to have as well. We're going to need so many colony ships. Give me this. We'll go back into colony ships after we get out a couple more traders. Okay. 16 turns. Jeez. Minus 50% growth because of pollution also sort of hurts on top of our already slow growth rate. We'll try to do something about the pollution. Ah, huh. class 3 poor world. Not incredible. Okay, I will set this probe to auto-explore as he's not really close to anything. There is some durantium over here which is useful. Also here. Right, space elevators as finished. We've got access to some more tech stuff. This will give plus one base minerals to a planet. Space elevator is very good. Razor's lift. Boost to manufacturing. Galactic achievement. Not very high priority for us, I think. New tech. Let's go ahead and get asteroid mining. Just get that done. We've been watching you. We know your people have been infiltrating the dreams of the Iconian refuge. We're not crazy. We demand 10 units of antimatter to build a device to shield our minds from your prying. You can have the antimatter that I don't have. Which is perfectly fine. If we can find a black hole and harvest some antimatter to bail ourselves out of antimatter debt eventually, that would be good. Flagship captain reports finding a lost cargo container adrift in space. I really need to silence the voiceovers. Nice as it is, for me, reading these things, not so good. Upon opening, they discovered a sophisticated propag propagandize module capable of swaying enemy colonists' loyalty. Uh, is that something we would like to do? That's a lot of gold, however. And this probably just reduces influence, which I don't think should be incredibly important. Let's take it apart. Give me the cash. We can use that cash to get diplomats. We can use that cash to do all manner of good things. Rush out colonist ship. We're about to colonize this planet. If we can make that happen this turn. I will. Uh, we also, this has just become extra high priority because this Durantium is going to be extremely valuable. If we can get there in time, our ships be so slow. Movement of four. Damn. Anyway. Look at the AI just zipping around doing all sorts of things. Okay. Class 21, amazing. Do we want to make this a colony? A, a core world? Maybe. Maybe. I think this will be a good core world. This planet, maybe not so much. All right, back on our home planet. We have access to a few things. The Beacon of Babylon. I mean, if we can build it, it would just be great. How many crystals are expensive? You need five of them. That's at least 500 plus credits that we're going to need. But just being able to build this would be great. How many crystals by chance? Yes. Alrighty. So we could build this. It would take a lot of production. How long are we talking to build that? 37 turns. And we could probably speed that up. But I think it's so important to 
build it and just deny the AI access and also it'll help just grow our influence so incredibly quickly. I would rather focus on research. And you know, it's not like we have other things to build. Let's go for it. How many crystals? It is. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. There goes all of our cash. That's what cash is for. The beacon. We could build. Kind of want to use all of this for research. So there is technically a spot there. Yeah, that's fine. Not the most incredible in terms of adjacency, but we're going to have it, and that's the important thing. I think we might need another colonist ship. The problem with that is we don't actually have that many pups, and I would like to hang on to these guys. Ooh, approval is looking real good now. That is a good indeed. Our pollution hurts. Can we spare one more colonist? Four more turns until we get this. I would not mind establishing a presence on each of these solar systems adjacent to us. It's kind of why I think we do go for one more. We build one more. We'll go down to three pop. We'll have that out in two turns. We have our first freighter. Who likes us the least here? Everybody's kind of okay with us. Uh, if we go to war with anybody, it'll be the Altarians for law reasons. You guys... Seem like you're going to be a problem with this whole spying on our dream thing. And you are our closest neighbor. So we will go ahead and make friendly with these guys. They are a little bit ahead of us in tech. <laughs> they have some more power. What we should be looking for is like the biggest threats, I guess. And as it happens, it's these two guys. So let's make friends with these dudes. The Iconian Refuge. We'll go ahead and trade with them as well. We know where their planets are. I believe your trade routes are affected by, like, planetary distance and the population. We're not going to worry about that too much. We're just going to send this freighter right over here. All right, we've got that planet and that planet. That's good stuff. More resources for our home world. Um, what else have we got here? No planets over this way. I think your job is done for us, Probe. You can just auto-explore. Colony ship. We just sent blindly to this planet and there happens to be a class 26 amazing right there what a find huge the flowers of a specific plant on colas 4 are a powerful intoxicant the drug provides an intense feeling of contentment to all those who consume it although in a few cases people have been content to walk directly into powerful machinery what are your orders put in railings and let people use the drugs recreationally we get 10 percent improvement bonus to individualism we don't want to increase crime, even though it does give us gross income. Uh, we get approval, more minus to growth, plus manufacturing, which could be good. We already suck on growth. Do we want to make growth suck even more? Minus 25%? I don't think so, because we might make this a core world, and we don't want it to have that bad growth, even though the extra manufacturing would be good. This is fine. We just take the 10% approval with no negatives. We have found some humans. Pleasure to meet you. I hope we can get into get this relationship off to a good start. Uh, we are glad to have finally met you humans. There is asteroid mining. Fantastic. And research. Beautiful. Couldn't have asked for better. With asteroid mining, we will get access to a few asteroid miners for free. So we'll just go ahead and send those to mine these here asteroids closest to our home world. And that'll give us some small amount of minerals to use on our core planet. Our territory contains a disputed region rich in resources. Unfortunately, a rival political faction on our world is also claiming it as their own. We are open to negotiations, but we need your support. If you back our claim, we will share the resources with you. However, if you remain neutral, you may not be able to maintain a friendly relationship. Okay. We support their relations... We got plus one relation to help build, you know, a, a friendly basis to, to work off of. Maybe not go to war with those awful humans. We also get to Arno Spice. Um, or we could remain neutral. And I don't think we want to do this. I don't think we need to do this. Let's go ahead and um, grab the Arno Spice. It's fine. We can always sell it off if we need it. We might use it to build some buildings. Our empire is looking great. Off to a healthy boy's start. I don't love that these guys have pushed a little bit closer. 
grabbing that planet, which I guess is fine. We do want to grab this, however. That's an important one to have. We do have a ship en route. It'll be there in two turns. Plus five gross income to all of our worlds for 50 months. Acquire the goods. Options. Sound. Disable the voiceovers. I am your voiceover now. Okay. Let's move on. Alrighty. Hello, prey meat. Have you come to present yourself for consumption by the Festron? Good. Good. Uh, okay. They're gonna probably be a little bit harder to be friends with. But it's nice to have a target that we can throw our allies at. That's what we're going to do. I think you will find this difficult to digest. We also found eyeball people. The Intuary. We see you. We greet you. Uh, we greet you with a hope for the future. Hi. Now we do have to get another colonist off into space. 88%. Yeah, it's going to be you. Get you. And this will probably be the last colony ship that we pick up. We also grab research district for our technological capital and being able to upgrade our districts and so on. Research grants. All very good. Um, leadership recruiting would be very nice to have. Diplomacy would also be very nice. It's all good. It is all good stuff. Artificial gravity for extra movement to our ships is becoming less important as we have grabbed up enough enough land i would say there's really a choice between leadership recruiting i would say because a leadership recruiting leads on into the minister of health finance and defense positions which i really like having diplomacy however gives us that plus one diplomatic bonus we'll just make ourselves a little bit safer and have access to cultural treaties and so on i think we'll go for you leadership recruiting also gives us another policy we would like to have a look at the policies. All right, we can ease off on the colony ships for now. Uh, we could maybe just do supply ships so we get out the beacon faster. And I think that's the play. Let's just do one or two of those because this beacon is going to take quite a while to finish on its own. All right, we, the Festron Hunt, are approaching a significant period in our life cycle, our sacred mating ritual. For the ritual success, we require sentience to feast upon. We would like you to provide these sentience. You can gather them from your prisons if that helps you justify it, but its importance to our kind cannot be overstated. Will you offer this gesture of goodwill? We can lose a bunch of approval, or we can just say absolutely not. I think it's going to be an absolutely not sort of scenario here. We are going to have issues with the Altarian as well. I feel like, which is okay. But we would like to be in a position to have an alliance with people so that if somebody makes war with us, we can kind of let them do the fighting on our behalf. As your flagship approaches, an abandoned cargo container detects an advanced depleted resource module within. Uses power in the future, deployed to drain resources from enemy planets, giving you a strategic advantage in conflicts. Or 500 treasury. I think 500 treasury is good for us let's do that we should probably think about turning something into a core world and you hurry up and get here already dude and where would we like another core world there's a black hole over here i think this can be a core world there's some thulium as well we're gonna want some constructor ships Ooh, monthly income is 13 that's pretty good we might take out a land exploitation now in favor of research grants. And we will have another policy soon. We'll have another policy slot soon. We don't need to do that just yet. Um, can we go up to medium taxes? I think we can. We can afford this change. 88% still pretty good. The question is, when is it best to do a core world? I don't think we need a core world. If anything becomes a core world, it'll be this guy. Because they're a bit far out. We can settle these planets to supply it. It's got good resources. Possibly some more planets down here. So we'll probably make Martin 1 a core world. And we'll leave all of this just developing our, our capital. Um, as for this, we will say absolutely not. I don't think feeding anything to alien species is good morally. I don't feel good about it. We do, however, have another colony ship. And I think it's probably a good idea to send this guy down here. Especially if we're going to make this a core world, having another colony 
just supplying it really close by, there is an argument to be made to send it over here as well. And this is actually quite good. It's a class 3. We'll send it down this way. We will be using this draft colonist when we can. Yes, give me the asteroid mining cluster. Okay, what foul pollutant of a creature crosses my screen? Uh, we are glad to meet you, Kinder Ahagala. May our civilizations work together for a better future. The Korath. Always the Korath. Always the Korath. Alright, we've got two very angry boys. Uh, let's go ahead and make nice with everybody. I will give you guys open borders. They're very happy to do so. Just give me some cash for this. It's just like a flat no. Alright, give me 60. Happy with this. Open borders with you. Let's go through and just make sure we have open borders with everybody. Maybe we could get open borders with these guys and just hold off war a little bit. But I don't feel good about that or this. Let's get open borders with eyeball guys. We'll take half your cash. We're good here. Open borders with you guys. Even though we would like to go to war with these guys eventually, we have bigger fish to fry. And maybe, maybe, maybe. Let's have a look. So the Korath, we're going to want to keep an eye on to see if they go to war with anybody. And these are the Festron dudes. If we ruin their festival, they hate us. I'm going to spend a bit of cash on a diplomat. On a diplomat. We don't have very good diplomats, it seems. Our leaders, in fact, suck. We'll hold off on that then. We'll hold off. Finally, we got Martin 1, which is going to be our next core world, I think. Let's go ahead and... God, all of our leaders suck. Our leaders are so bad. All right, well, I guess we will take the most loyal person we have and make him a governor of Martin 1. It's not terrible. It's right. Right. Done. We will need to draft colonists. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to send that ship down over here. Our supply ship flies back to our home planet. Colonist ship. Head down. We already have a colonist ship heading over here. That's lovely. We'll send this one down here. More supply ships. Rush of excitement in our space program has spurred a new, a lot of new candidates applying for critical positions. Oh, ouch. We needed that a little while ago, but it's okay. Maybe we do get a diplomat. It doesn't have to be good. They just need to be somebody. Okay, let's go ahead and stick you guys here. And with the prospect of war looming, we may have to go into some military research just so that we have some kind of a defense. We don't really know where these guys are on the map just yet. Uh, I believe these are eyeball people. Yes, those are the eyeballers. These are the Archean. And these guys are our nemesis, though they don't know it just yet. The Iconians. Yeah, we have a decent amount of space. We've got we've got room to grow, and there's possibly more expanding that we can do eventually. But it is a big galaxy out there, and um, hopefully we can hold off on the war front for a little bit longer until we get our main planet in order. We get this beacon of Babylon built, and then maybe we can look at getting some critical infrastructure. We will also be needing a couple constructors. We might actually purchase these constructors. How much would it cost to purchase a ship? Just curious. 400 credits. And we're not that rich. I mean, we're making 22 gold per turn, which is great. Don't get me wrong. Don't get it twisted. I think we're going to increase your HP. Although more movements is always good. Just more moves. Just give me more moves. More movements. Your flagship discovers an ancient artifact, a mysterious object imbued with immense power. Channel the artifact's energy, plus one manufacturing to all of our worlds for 20 months. That is really good. Let's go ahead and do that. That's great. That's great. Let's actually settle up on this planet first before we, we call it Paradise, plus two to all. Damn. Planet Fall will probably go here. It gives plus one adjacency to everything. This is just an immense amount of manufacturing. Holy crap. I hadn't planned for this to be a manufacturing world. But I guess that's what it's going to be. Planetary generator it is. Let's go ahead and pop that down here. That's so good. This we can get a very 
juicy triangle of stuff here and maybe develop this planet a little bit later on. Food and population over this way. And a nice plus two adjacency to all. That's good. That's very good. All right. And that's going to do it for episode one of this playthrough. Still unclear how we're going to go about grabbing a victory here. Of the victory conditions. I think an alliance victory could be fun to pull off in this situation. Where we just get like a few allies early on. So we already be part of the way towards this. Maybe use those allies to sort of form a federation and just control a certain sector of space and then go for another win. We've never done a prestige victory. I imagine that takes very long and is quite hard. So may maybe that's what we go for. And a culture victory, well, if that happens, it happens. I mean, if our culture just starts to snowball and it starts gobbling up all of the galaxy, then so be it. But that is it. Thank you very much for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Bye!